Daily Graphic this morning is uh, telling us about COVID-19 uh, hikes, debt service cost, government re-strategizes for rebound, and Deputy Finance Minister Debussy Charles Edubwahin. Uh, he's been in the news lately. Uh, we haven't heard from him in a long time. Farmer, 53, kills wife, 50, commits uh, suicide. Also, MTN versus NCA Communications Ministry welcomes the court ruling. Uh, what's on the back page? If young Kwanzaa Hospital receives supplies as well, and Ghana Sanders Authority hates market with a flak toxin campaign. When I was a child, we were told that there's a flak toxin in our kinky, and it's not good for us. Um, I'm, I'm a young man now, and they, uh, they're talking about the flak toxin. Anyway, the Ghanaian Times says government to clamp down on witches' camps to stop inhumane treatment of persons accused of witchcraft. A public account committee directs CMC PPA to retrieve some 312,784 Ghana cities uh, from defaulting staff. Man kills wife, commits suicide, and President cuts sword for construction of phase three of five district water scheme at Adaklu. Good morning to you, the Honorable Kwame Agboja. Adaklu Mezaya, uh, that's your constituency. They're benefiting from some goodies. The business finder, pensions, pensions, ICU rally support for SNIT to enhance operations, beef up payments. Also, food prices to remain low, according to Isoko. The Daily Heritage, show us your work. Concerned youth of Ashanti, uh, Asante challenge Akufuado. And ex CEO others begin refunding money to the state. Also, assault on military personnel, security agencies losing respect, Stranek Africa cites political interference as the cause of it. And also, the Daily Guide, Rawlings set for NDP Congress. Venture capital NDC gurus shared 14.7 million Ghana cities. Oga kidnapping is our business. as a banner headline, and witness tells court in the matter of the uh, Takradi girls who were told are uh, now deceased. Nana Paris tribal agenda claims, which tortured with chainsaw. The vanguard, no coronavirus tests at Kotoka. That's what they are claiming, even though the authorities say there will be. Shan tribal bigots, Nana admonishes Ghanaians, and three NDC officials to cough over uh, 15 million Ghana cities to the state. Comes with a photo of Mr. Daniel Duku, former CEO of the Venture Capital Trust Fund. And failed NPP parliamentary candidate diverts families 400,000 US dollars to men's gold. Okay, those are the front page issues we have here. But quickly, let's get to connect with uh, our friends uh, on social media, on, on Zoom. And Eda Magbana is the Deputy National um, youth organizer of the NDC. We don't as yet have a rep from the MPP. What we do, we will afford that individual a chance to join us. But many thanks to Sonar Fashions in Tamale for my outfit. Adam, good morning. How are you doing? Johnny, good morning and good morning to your team. I'm, I'm doing well by God's grace. Okay. Um, yesterday, the COVID tracker was relaunched and it, it would serve as a reminder. That's the understanding we're getting, especially when people are coming into the country, our borders, are, our airports are opened. Uh, how does that come to you? Johnny, um, I was surprised to hear that the government of Ghana relaunched the COVID-19 tracker yesterday. And I'm sorry, you, you, need to, you need to sit up because we, we can't see your lips. Is it better now? Um, well, you may have to push back the screen of your laptop a bit. Is it better? Yes, this we can manage this. Okay. So, Johnny, I was surprised to hear that yesterday the government of Ghana relaunched the COVID-19 tracker. Because if you recall, during the lockdown, the same government of Ghana, led by President Akufuado, Dr. Baumia, and the Minister for Communications, the Honorable Esla Ousu, held a launch where they even invited musicians and 
other people, live launch of COVID-19 tracker, virtual launch. And we had heard rumors of hundreds of thousands of Ghana cities that went into the payment of the artists. They came out, debunked those rumors and said, the artists that were paid were actually paid with the personal funds of the ministers and, and, and some benevolent persons. After spending so much to launch a track, after spending so much on a tracker, hours later, everybody who had attempted downloading the tracker on their phones and using it for the purpose for which it was created, it was paid for by the government of Ghana, the tracker was actually not working. We were told that for iPhone users, we needed to wait for some few more days before we could get the tracker on the iOS. So one would have, one wondered, or at the time we were wondering why the indie states into launching a tracker which was not even for public consumption. And after weeks, after months of launching this tracker, which has delivered absolutely nothing to the fight against COVID-19, they still had the gut, they still had the audacity. And I find that to be an insult to the intelligence of the people. And, and, uh, how did you come by the fact that the app has achieved nothing? Did the Ghana Health Service tell you that? Did the ministry tell you that? Who confirmed that to you? Johnny, Johnny, you are a media man. I am equally a Ghanaian. And when they launched the app, what was the narrative around it? We were told the app was going to help in contact tracing. Mm. Was that not the case? Go, go ahead. So, Johnny, we have, I have religiously followed the press conferences, the narrative of the Ministry of Health, and even the Ministry of Information on COVID-19. When it comes to tracking, when it comes to the contact tracing, the same government after launching this app is paying people, you are aware that thousands of people have been recruited up and have been paid as contact tracers. These are the people that are actually doing the contact tracing. This app has failed. It has not delivered value. And I challenge the ministry to come out and tell us how effective this app that they spent hundreds of thousands of Ghana cities on has been to the people of Ghana. It has delivered nothing. It helped in no contact tracing. And you see, we have gotten to a point where Johnny, you, myself, and all young people in this country must begin to hold political leadership a bit more accountable. Because if you spend money, money, millions of Ghana cities to launch an app, to purchase an app, you spend millions buying or bringing artists to come and have a virtual launch of the app at the time we had a lockdown. Today, you are relaunching the same app. If the app was indeed effective, if the app was indeed delivering the, on the purpose for which it was created and paid for by the people of Ghana, do you think that there would have been the need to relaunch it to remind people that there is even the app? Adam, so this is what the minister said at the relaunch of the app. It says, under this relaunch platform, healthcare staff will be able to contact patients and track the movement of COVID-19 live cases. The new platform can also alert users on moving out of allowed areas, report case breaches to authorities, and push notifications to bulk users, among others. Esla said the COVID-19 tracker app forms part of measures to leverage technology to fight the spread of the disease. So this will help in contact tracing it will alert health officials, and it will also alert the individual that you are moving out of a safe area. Don't go. Johnny, 
everybody who uses any app on their smartphones, you can always update your app. Even WhatsApp can be updated. When you update the app, it comes with some new features. So you can always conduct regular updates. Does WhatsApp organize a relaunch of WhatsApp because they have added some new features to their app? Indeed, if the app was effective and people were using it, you would even notice, it would even give you an alert that there is need for you to update your app to include new features. So I'm asking Johnny, Facebook even, on daily basis, they add some new features and those who update their ads get those new features. It happens with almost all the apps. Do we see Facebook relaunching? Does Mark Zuckerberg invite Ghanaians and the world, and I mean people, Facebook users of world over and say, I'm relaunching Facebook because some new features or platforms have been added to the app? So it simply doesn't make sense. And we ought to address it as so. It is only because the app is ineffective and it's not serving its purpose. That is why the minister had to recommit resources into relaunching the app. Because if the app was working, Johnny, like I've explained with WhatsApp and Facebook, the app itself would have elected the users that some new features have been added and they ought to have updated it. So we bottom, bottom line is what? The, that we, don't, we didn't need the app or the app hasn't uh, showed strongly in the duty that was assigned to it. What are you saying? Johnny, the app was a complete failure. And, 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 and we have to say, it, as I said, it was a complete failure waste of money, waste of taxpayers' money. Mm. The app has served no purpose. The app hasn't helped in any contact tracing. It hasn't worked. And, 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 and I'm surprised that we are even having this conversation. I'm surprised that they even had the, 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 the courage to invite journalists to the launch and other people because the app didn't work. And we spent millions of Ghana cities on the app. And today we have been told that he has added some new features and all of that. Like I said, it doesn't make sense. Nobody really launches an app to update the people that the app has new updates or new features. If the app was effective and serving its purpose, Johnny, we wouldn't even be having this conversation here today. Okay. And um, one of the key, uh, let's move on, and you can always join us with your thoughts and comments uh, on, our, on our WhatsApp platforms or social media platforms. The hashtag is... Uh, TV3 New Day, make sure that it counts. Now, on page five of the Finder newspaper, Isoko says food prices to remain low. Commodity prices will continue to fall this month. Agricultural research firm Isoko has projected. According to Isoko, this is because it is still the harvest season for most of the commodities grown down south of the country. This is going to increase the volumes that are supplied to the market, causing prices to fall. Isoko reported that at the end of trading in the month of August, there was a general drop in commodity prices. Tomato prices plunged by 41.69% to close to 330 Ghana cities, 50 pesos per crate. Pona, that's yam, followed with a drop of 9.0% uh, to close to 805.50% uh, per tubers. I mean, and clearly, it's showing you how the decline is local rise, maize, and all of that. You would want to credit a, a, a fantastic program like Planting for Food and Jobs for, for these things, won't you? Johnny, I think that all of us as, as, as Ghanaians, one of the things we should be interested in is ensuring that we protect the local economy, help our farmers get value for the things that they produce, help them to get markets. And also for us as consumers, we buy food, uh, I mean, very affordable. So if there is any general drop in prices of food items, it should be good news to us, especially for the very downtrodden, the very poor people who struggle to get three square meals a day. But while at it, you ought to also understand the times and seasons and the months in which we are in and see if there is a certain trajectory that explains why there should be general drop in prices of food items at this time. Mm. Johnny, I'm always on the road. 
And as I speak to you, I have a very big worry. What's and your worry? My worry is, is the farmers, the poor farmers who are producing yam at this time. And on my way from Sunyani, they will be stopping your car and be begging you for you to just purchase their, their yam. Because if you don't do that, it will, it, will, it will go bad. Johnny, my worry is the, the, the watermelon producers that I meet along the Adan, Accra, Sogakope Road, who virtually have to beg for you to buy their watermelons at two cities, three cities, four cities, five cities. The same uh, quantity of watermelons that you should be buying in Accra, about 15 to 20 cities. I think that the, the, the era where farmers have the prices of food commodities dropping so low mm -hmm. in the harvest season, then when the season is over, they struggle to get, I mean, we struggle to get food to buy and the same items cost very high. We must do something about it. It was for that reason why the NDC government under the late Professor John Ivan Satamils introduced the Ghana Buffer Stock Company. The idea was to be buying from the farmers in this harvest world like this, where there is abundance of harvest. So the prices, the market demands that the prices go down. And buffer stock hasn't really been functioning well. And so you still have peasant farmers, smallholder farmers struggling to get their goods to the market. Johnny, this mass production, this abundance of, of, of harvest at this time has got nothing, absolutely nothing to do with whether I'm planting for food and jobs or what have, or whatever. Why, why would a, you say that? Why would you say that? John, it's a seasonal thing. It is, it's not the case. It's the seasonal thing. And I am telling you that we are just in the season where the yams are ready. We are just in the season where the items are ready. I'm a farmer myself. It's a seasonal thing. Let's not pretend or behave as if this is the first time that we are having food uh, prices of food commodities dropping within a particular period in the year. It is simply because we are in the season. When the season is over, Johnny, that is when we struggle to get tomatoes. And you could go to the market and buy, a, I mean, some small tomatoes for 20, 20, 30 cities, 40 cities, something that you should have bought for just about 10 cities. Every Ghanaian knows this. It's basic. So our focus of the discussion should rather be on what we can do to ensure that all year round, you have such sustain, you have such affordable prices for food items. I and thought that I thought that was why I thought that was why the government, Adam, that was why the government in power, the Akufalo government says we're going to have warehouses to store these foods. We're going to have dams to be able to have an all year round irrigation program or platform. And then we're also going to set up factories to be able to do this. So the things you are talking about have been talked about already and, and they are emotional. Johnny, are they not? Johnny, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. I have mentioned to you that the NDC under Professor John Evans Atamels and President Mahama brought what we call the Ghana Buffer Stock Company. The idea of the Buffer Stock was that when we are in the season, in the harvest season like we are now, mm. where prices of food items are low, where farmers are struggling to get market for their produce. The buffer stock company moves around this country and buys these food items, preserves them so that every time, all year round, we would have enough food in the market, which will not affect the prices. So the first question we should be asking ourselves is, what has happened to the buffer stock company? There is no need to reinvent the wheel. Every government has invested in warehouse. And the buffer store company had warehouses across the country. You can argue about the numbers, yes, but if you have a government that is serious about solving this problem for farmers, what the government ought to have done was to equip the buffer store company and ensure that there's that expansion so that they can reach out to farmers in any remote area in this country. So now let's not make it look as if President Akufado from 2017 has come up with some uh, innovative idea of solving this problem. There is already a solution. He has decided to abandon that solution to score cheap political points. But let's ask ourselves, how many of these warehouses that they claim they have built are even in use as we speak, Johnny? So the, the question is that what has happened to the Ghana Buffer Store Company? The okay. solution is already there. Mm. The NDC established the solution. Just implement it, just execute it, and let's ensure that 
our farmers get value for what they produce. As I speak to you, Johnny, mm. I produced some chili, I mean pepper, right. over, over, over the period. We have to employ traditional means of drying it because the prices that were being offered us in the market at the time was not good enough. So we have to dry it and waiting to sell it to any company that will grind it and use it for sheet or powdered pepper and all of that. So there are real problems. Many of our farmers are suffering. Our farmers need some redemption. And that is why come 2021, under the leadership of John Dramani Mahama, we would make sure that the Ghana Buffer Store Company works. We'll make sure that the are Greek mechanization centers that we want to establish in all the district works so that our farmers will okay. have a breezer and have market for what they sweat so much to produce. Thank you. Uh, Richard Yama joins us now. He's a deputy uh, communications director of the NPP. Richard, welcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, let me say good morning to your viewers. Great. Now, before you joined us, we, we had a conversation about the relaunch of the COVID-19 uh, tracker app. And then, for example, things that the app has not achieved anything yet, and the relaunch is, is an insult to the Ghanaian public because an app like WhatsApp, for example, always has updates. As the minister says, the, it has been improved. The tracker app has been improved. But WhatsApp doesn't relaunch the app just because they added new features to it. Why did the government decide to do a relaunch of an app that's already in existence that's working? That's it. And then we'll come to their great question. Um, let me say good morning to your viewers uh, once more. On the issue of, uh, is it the launch or relaunch of the... Uh, what COVID-19 tracker. tracker app. Yes. Uh, I I wouldn't pretend to have a lot of knowledge uh, on it um, in the first place, and so uh, I can't uh, speak much to it. And if you wouldn't mind, you would pardon me because I don't I haven't have addressed my mind to it. And sometimes these are some of the challenges. Uh, I'm a member of a, a, a party and government in power. Uh, we come in the morning and you throw things at us. If I had an idea, we we're going to be discussing this this mm. morning, I probably would have dug uh, into it, but I'm just tuning in and this is what you're putting up, uh, up uh, to me. So I'd rather you uh, excuse me of that. Okay. I don't have let, let, let me want to Let me assist you uh, a bit. So the minister says the, the tracker app was being relaunched one, because uh, we're getting our, our, our airports open at this point, and also because it will help to contact trace, um, you know, cases and get, let people know the safe areas, let health officials know where to find who and to help in our fight against COVID-19. She says we're going to leverage technology in the fight against COVID-19. I don't know if you have any thoughts to share about it, but uh, regarding whether or not you are told ahead what topics have, you've been here a couple of times when topics have been introduced to you and you responded to them. So fair to say yeah, that- Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying that in this particular instance, I do not have, uh, because this is something that is uh, just uh, 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 coming up. They have relaunched. Mm. They mu there must be some reason and uh, explanation uh, uh, for it. Okay. And I'm saying I haven't addressed my mind to it. And Great. So I do not want to speculate. I don't, I'm not one of the people who speaks on matters that I do not know. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Yes. Let's, let's go to the agri issue. Now, Isoko is uh, an agricultural research firm. It has projected that food prices will drop, um, you know, will continue to fall at least up until the end of the year. The volumes will increase and the prices will drop. And I was just telling Adam that maybe we should be giving the planting for food and jobs um, program by the government some credit. He says, no, it is seasonal. We all know how the planting season and the farming season goes. So that's not credit for you. That's credit to the farmer. However, we should be looking at ways of preserving and uh, avoiding post harvest losses. What do you say? Um, I, I, I heard him and uh, it begs the question. Uh, he virtually was attempting to uh, credit uh, everything to 
the buffer stock and professor the late professor Atamelos. and then that raises a fundamental question and that is if agriculture did so well under professor mills and subsequently uh, uh, president mahama buffer stock was set up and was doing well everything was uh, excellent then why is he enumerating all the problems he has identified if the ndc was supposed to have been solving them and has solved them we shouldn't come and have any problems in the agriculture sector he himself is doing pepper and he doesn't know how to preserve it and he's blaming that on government if that is not an irresponsible farmer i don't know what else you you would get out of that because when you set out to uh, uh, grow chili. We know in Ghana, the number one way of preserving chili is to dry it, have it pounded into powder and sold. So you are doing this and yet you think there's a problem and the government should be uh, 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 blamed for it because you are drying chili. You see, uh, sometimes I think we need to credit our viewers and listeners with some respect and uh, uh, intelligence. Government is a continuum. The agri sector is one of the fastest growing sectors in this country, and everybody attests to that fact. Food prices on the average have dropped drastically compared to the NDC period. Food inflation has dropped drastically. We know that. You ask yourself what is led to that. And you see, when you have a government that thinks ahead and into the future, you have a, a holistic approach to the sector so that you have the food uh, and jobs program. You have the mechanization program. And if you are not aware, tractors have been deployed. Combined harvesters have been deployed. Uh, um, what do we call it? Rice milling uh, at the local level. You have smaller scale rice milling at the local level that have been deployed. And I will challenge you and your cameramen and producers to go into the market. You realize there's been an increase in local rice consumption as a result, because in the first place, the rice is being produced. It is being milled, it's being processed. Well, the interesting yeah, part, yeah. the interesting part is now it was the, TV3, the, it was TV3 the, the, that the, announced the, the rice the, glut. The plan is, the plan is, mm to ensure that in the end, we are at least processing 60 to 70% of our own locally grown rice. I think somewhere it's currently somewhere 40% uh, 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 now. Mm -hmm. There are targets that the government has put in place. If you look at rearing for food and jobs, the attempt to increase um, animal uh, 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 house boundary, to uh, the, uh, uh, increase the production of fish, uh, of eggs and uh, chicken. I think a couple of weeks ago, the uh, Chicken uh, 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 Rares Association of Ghana, they came out and were uh, actually praising the government for the efforts in the sector to help them improve chicken uh, uh, production. And the fact that we are gradually putting a stop to the importation of uh, uh, these things. You first and foremost need to create the market here, create the local taste for it. These are all ongoing. People appreciate that. Go and look at the dams that have been dug. You might sit here in Accra and laugh and joke about it. But the people whose uh, 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 community have had these da uh, uh, um, um, uh, dams, appreciate them very well because they are able to 
make a living out of them. And yet there are post-harvest so, losses. But this attitude... And, and yet there are post-harvest losses. Let's move out of that. And yet there are post-harvest post losses. Because if oh, I understood... In the United oh, oh, States, there are post-harvest losses. Hmm. It is everywhere. It is the quantum of the post-harvest losses. The agri sector, the ministry has put up uh, 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 um, what do we call it? Uh, even uh, 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 buffer stock has put up uh, uh, um, what do we call um, the, the warehouses across the country, every region. Now the ministry is looking at getting every district a warehouse. Now, Richard, the warehouses that you speak about, the farmers themselves say the conditions of the warehouses are not able to preserve their food. For example, if you have tubers of yam, which are bulky, uh, the warehouses that have been put together, if we had six, seven farmers, all their produce cannot fit in them. Two, if you are storing cereals, which I know the government is heavy on, rice, millet, maize, and all and of that. Silos. Yes, they say, they say that the conditions of those warehouses, which are just empty rooms with uh, zinc over them, are not the conducive spaces within which to store these foods now johnny let me give you an example i come from a yam producing area okay right. you go to panda i will do a lot of yam mm. traditionally we are yet to even find a way of preserving yam because yam cannot be preserved under cold conditions it rots mm. if you know how yam is stored actually it's done on the farm Right. I have gone, I have farmed before, and I know how it's preserved here. You put uh, this in, it's just leaves on the floor, mm. you put the yam on it, and then there are these, um, I don't know how they call it, but it looks like a, a, a wire mesh. That is what we use to cover the yam, to preserve it. Okay? If you put it under cold conditions, it rots and very fast. You need air and all those things. So we, uh, these are challenges for our technical people and our scientists to come up with some proper ways of preserving them. There are those items that can be preserved through refrigeration. And those are being done. Where? The point I'm making is that- Where, where are they the being done? NBC where? have invested in the agri sector so much. We will not be working from scratch. And Adam will not be telling us that there is nothing working. He says there's Milling a buffer stock, on, the buffer stock. If you look at the building of the, the process, the, the uh, parable uh, 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 dam and the factory is going, is that not a solution to all the tomato productions in the, in, in the north? Okay. Now, Richard, let me, let me put a final question to you. The government had a fantastic plan, planting for food and jobs, planting for export and rural development, rearing for food and jobs, and the, the government says that, look, we're going to put these things together, put together factories that will uh, source these raw materials and convert them. While at it, we will have dams that will be able to do irrigation so that it will not be a rain-based thing. And then all of it together will make sure that lives are preserved and enriched by the, through the agricultural sector. In your opinion, what will be your score of the government on that front, the multifaceted approach to trying to fix the agricultural problem. Oh, you have just said it. A multifaceted approach, okay? And you would confirm that there are food processing factories dotted across this country right now that are processing agricultural produce, okay? And so that is a step in the right direction. When the NDC was in power, for the whole of their eight years in power, they produced only one factory. And it's called the Commander Sugar Factory. What has Johnny, happened to I it? Ask you, I would ask you, has the Commander, have you seen any sugar on the market called Commander Sugar? You have been in power for four years. You inherited that factory. They, what did you do with it? On, they were in power for eight years. They gave you one failed factory. Called but what Commander have you sugar done with the factory? You, now, we four years. What have you done with the factory? Uh, um, 
No, I want to understand. From independence, mm. from independence till date, till the MPP came to power, we had 365 factories in this country. All of them were sold out during the uh, NDC, PNDC period. And I'm saying that the second coming of the NDC, they produced only one factory called Commander Sugar Factory which has not produced any sugar on the market. The MPP currently has 220 uh, factories that are in progress. Richard. Some 78 of them have been completed Richard. in four years. For Richard. goodness sake. Richard. Se uh, so one N versus 78 will deserve some commendation. Richard, I am not condemning you. I am asking you that that Commander Sugar Factory that you inherited in 2017, up until 2020, you say there's no sugar on the market called Commander. What have you done as a government with that inheritance that you got? Have you been able to produce any sugar out of it? What's, what's the problem? Uh, Johnny, Johnny, shouldn't you be asking uh, uh, Edem Agbana why they left us with a redundant sugar factory that they had invested almost $50 million in? Shouldn't they be accounting for it? But Even that doesn't they, answer my question on, on why the factory is not producing the sugar. Use the money for that you you sink fifty million dollars into a factory that does not produce sugar. That is where the conversation should start. No, from, you have had four years. Are, the factory is there. What we have you done with the factory for factory four years? Sure it comes back on stream. The whole approach was wrong, and when they were doing it, we told you. We told the NDC, you don't put up a factory and now go and look for its raw materials. You make the raw materials available and abandoned to feed the factory. When they were putting it up, they were giving you excuses of the seasonal nature of farming sugarcane. From there, you should have known it was a failure. I'm saying that they produce one factory, a failed factory. And these people have the guts to come and sit down and ask us so, what we so are Richard, doing. So, Richard, if I understand you, the government promised to put up dams. The prom government promised to plant for food and jobs. The factory is there. Your problem is that the raw materials cannot be sourced. And in four years, no dam, we still can't find the raw materials, and the factory hasn't produced a cup of sugar. Are you happy about that? I am saying that the person who sank your money, my money, $50 million, putting up that factory that is not fit for purpose, should come and account for it. How are you solving the problem? You found the How problem. How are we solving Yes, we are cleaning their mess. And I told you, we are retrofitting it. We oh. are retrofitting it. You need the, uh, 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 the sugar to be produced, the sugar cane to be produced in abundance as well. If you are aware, if you care to know that uh, uh, there's uh, some PPE uh, restructuring on that Commander Sugar Factory ongoing. Now, point is that a lot went into it. You need to see where you went wrong and how to correct it going forward. Those are things that are being done, but I'm saying that please do not put Commander Sugar Factory on the head of the MPP. The NDC needs to account for it. And I expect you to ask Adam, if in eight years, all you could do in the manufacturing sector, in the agriculture sector, was to produce one Commander Sugar Factory which cannot produce a single uh, ounce of, uh, uh, what do we call it, sugar. Shouldn't they be accounting for that? Well, I'll put that question to him. But you also tell me, in four years, are you suggesting to me that in four years, we couldn't have planted the sugar cane to be able to provide jobs for the people of Commander by producing sugar there? John, did you hear what I said? You come, your, let's say your dad left you an inheritance of a rickety VW uh, 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 Beetle. It's your inheritance. The v Beetle has no steer, has no ties, has no engine. Do you put it on the road? Don't you have to have the tires fixed, have the steer fixed, have the engine put there, uh, and then check and make sure everything is uh, uh, fit for purpose before you put it on the road? So, so that's what we've been doing for four years. But in the meantime, we are creating new factories. I'm asking you to ask the person who has been putting that factory for eight years and it failed. 
If within eight years you could only produce one, I have done 78. I've been busy putting up 78 addicts. 220 in actual fact, I have completed 78 addicts. And the I'm one that is near completion he is still not completed. To do one. The one has failed. Why? And the one that could have worked is still sitting there and rotting away. You are more interested in the one than the 78. Okay. The one that I have told you has no ties, has no uh, 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 engine, has no uh, steering. Okay. We will come back and hear Adam's response to that. But let's go to Bella. Bella will read a few messages uh, for us. Bella, welcome. Thank you. Interesting. Anyway, good morning, Johnny. Thank you for reading this message. Honorable Minister of Education, teachers of College of Distance Education are waiting to be posted. We have all the requirements as teachers, the teacher certificate, service certificate, and the teacher license yet not posted. Uh, about 3,700 of us from the various universities are still at home. Mr. Minister of Education, do something. This is from Patience at Tip from Tamale. So for Yamusa and Kumbungu says that the relaunch of the Ghana COVID-19 app is yet another indication of government's commitment to win the war against the virus. NDC will always have issues with anything good about the government. Good morning, TV3. The NPP government have failed the good people of this country and should be thrown out of office come December 7th. Hashtag rescue mission Mustafa Yusuf. Napari, Lemdim, Bella, Tamale. Okay. Charles Nyame from Asamankesi says, it will be very suicidal to allow these family and friends and PP government another four years in office. Our rich mineral resources that we as citizens always pride ourselves with can't be entrusted into their hands anymore. Ghana must be saved now from current dangerous hands for a better future tomorrow. Hmm. Good morning, TV3, for informing, entertaining, and educating us each blessed day. Thank you for your good work, Bijin, Bijin from Nima. If testing of COVID-19 costs $150, how much will a vaccine cost? Assuming we can develop one, I would rather stay put than pay $150 to this corrupt government for an unreliable test. And besides, is the dollar now the official currency of Ghana? from Ablade, a Fiakuma Zongo from Takrade. Well, the FDA says that it is actually re reliable. They have tested and it has proven to be reliable. Good morning, Mr. Johnny. It's a new day to be thankful and grateful to God for giving us another opportunity to be amongst the living. Let's pray for free, fair and peaceful elections as Ghana, uh, as Ghanaians come December, because our lives are always tantamount. I must confess that TV3 is simply the best. Say hi to all your viewers. Good. God forgive all gone souls. Halid Prince Mukadi Baramoni Sapashini from Tamale. Okay. Johnny, the problem we're facing with regard to corruption is as a result of one, hypocrisy from Ghanaians, especially the youth. Two, most Ghanaians show unconcerned. Uh, so most Ghanaians are unconcerned about governance. And three, well, we can move the country forward and we will put all leaders on their toes. Mohammed from Apam. We have a government that only believes in popul populism than doing what is needed. What this COVID-19 app intends to do is already embedded in Android and iOS. All one needs to do is to activate it. So actually, we don't need this app. Abu Bakari, Tahiru, Kuhu, Tafu. What happens to those uh, who may not necessarily have it as well? Well, TV3, hi, Johnny. I really love your questioning technique. As a matter of fact, you're the main reason for which I love watching TV3 New Day. The humongous money sharing spree embarked on by this government is beyond control. May God save us. Kenneth and Asamankese. From Masawudo and Kumase Bantama, fellow Ghanaians, let's ignore those with no vision or those who set lower standards. Indeed, the NDC does not have the best interest of Ghana at heart. Hashtag round two is a done deal for His Excellency Nana Adodankwe Kufuado. Regards to Honorable Nana Kwame Asamoah Boating Jacobu DCE. Okay. Good morning to you, Johnny and New Day crew. You're doing tremendously well, and may God richly bless you. The relaunch of the so called COVID 19 tracker shows clearly how ineffective the first one they wasted the taxpayers' money to launch is. If not, why didn't they update the old one but rather choose to relaunch a very new one? I don't think a new one was launched necessarily, Johnny. It's an old one that was relaunched, okay? So this is exactly, this is an insult to us, and as such, we must include it as one of the reasons we must vote massively against President Ekufuado and the NPP this year. Maxwell, it was the old one that was relaunched, by the way. Uh, hi, good morning, Johnny. This government is not serious at all. Relaunching of an app which virtually served no purpose is just a waste of state funds. The money could be used to pay legacy areas of teachers rather than wasting it on a useless app. Okay, hashtag 
pay legacy arrears now from Lawrence Forstadt Marcusim. Finally, good morning, Johnny. The NDC rep should tell us how much was a bag of fertilizer when they were in office and how many farms could, have form, uh, could afford to farm in large quantity as they do now from Kasapa in Boku. Bella, grateful for your time. And Adam, I'll come to you now. Um, now, Richard wants you to answer his question. For eight years, you only had one factory, and even that is non-functional. So you don't have the moral temerity to be asking them of factories. What do you say? What's your response? Tony, I, I, I am completely scandalized at the level of ignorance that my brother Richard clearly exhibited this morning on your program. And I will take it right from the issues of the COVID-19 tracker. He asserted that he was unaware about the COVID-19 tracker that his government launched on April 14th, costing Ghana 1.4 million Ghana cities. For a government spokesperson, for a deputy director of communications since April. He doesn't know anything about this, this tracker and he's trying to dodge questions around it, show the level of unseriousness of the government and his level of ignorance. And, and I'm not using ignorance as an insult because clearly, Johnny, if the app was functioning, an app that Ghana committed 1.4 million Ghana cities to, a, a, an app that was launched as far back as April, and that was supposed to serve a critical need in the fight against COVID-19, was clearly effectively serving its purpose. You think that Richard wouldn't have known about it? In a way, Richard barely knows about anything, and I think that he needs to get his facts right before appearing Make on Make progress. Let's talk about the factories. The, the, the second thing about the factories, Richard blatantly, blatantly lies about NDC investing in only one factory. I'm, I'm scandalized. Johnny, Ghana Gas Company Limited, Ghana Gas Company was an NDC factory or company that was created newly under us. We had the Bupe Share North Factory. We had the Diamond Cement Factory in Bupe. We had Gihok Footwear Factory in Kumasi. We had the Ghana Rising Industrial. Look, we have the Ayensu Starch Factory. We had the Adan Tomato. Johnny, when it comes to factories, we have many, 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 many factories to mention to you. And those were all projects under the NDC. For him to stand here or sit on your program and ignorantly assert that the NDC can be credited with only one factory either smacks of, of, of hypocrisy or lack of, or he's bereft of knowledge on the, the industrialization plan of the NDC. Okay. Tony. Why didn't the Commander the, Sugar Factory produce Tony, a bag of sugar at least? Tony, you should allow me. Why are you doing this? No, I want to understand. I mean, we don't have a lot of time, so I want you to respond so, to the question. So, Tony, under the NDC, the Ghana Free Zones Company, the Ghana Free Zones Company registered and worked government provided support for the establishment of more than 1,200 factories. And Ghana Free Zones Company is not far from TV3. They are just at cantonment. Go there and check from them. It doesn't so answer my question on the Commander Sugar Factory. Why I mean, were you not able? NDC he says there's no invested. product on the market. Hold on. There's no product on the market in terms of sugar that can lay claim to having come from Commander Sugar Factory. Why? Johnny, the NDC invested about $37 million into revamping the Commander Sugar Factory because we believe that the people of Commander and the central region deserve such a factory to create employment and also for the farmers. We launched that factory in 2016 and recall that we went back to the market and wanted to enter into a PPP agreement which would have an effect on the management and production. So we wanted to actually give out the company to a third party for management and, 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 and always execution of our agenda. We went, we advertised, and then we lost power. A new government has, has come. 
And a government that claims to be committed to industrialization has left that factory for four years. Incompetently, they have been able to get the factory to work. A factory that has the machinery, everything. In fact, there was a test run. You and I, you saw your, your television station in 2016 showed sugar that was produced from that place. So if after four years, Johnny, today the NPP government is still referring Ghanaians to John Mahama and the NDC about Commander Sugar Factory, it tells you a lot about their... You didn't have the raw sugar. materials. You set it up Johnny, and it doesn't have ties. Johnny, like, it's a rickety Johnny, thing. That's what Richard says. Johnny, let's assume, let's assume without admitting that indeed raw material was a problem. And you think that we should still be tolerating a government that has been in power for four years still giving us the same excuse? When all the hard work, infrastructure, in terms of, 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 of plant and machinery, has already been invested and done by the NDC government? And you talk about, you see Richard rather talking about, is he, on his issues about even the farm, Johnny, Isoko in May, 6 May, 6 May 2020, the same Isoko predicted that prices of food will be increasing. Why? Because they attributed it to the lack of uncertainty with regards to COVID-19. So my point is that when you check Isoko, and maybe Richard doesn't know what Isoko is, I'm telling you I'm a farmer. He may not even, he clearly Richard doesn't understand issues of, of, of the value chain of, of agriculture in this country. He said he's farmed before, so you cannot Isoko say that. Isoko does a monthly, Johnny, Isoko does a monthly analysis of food prices or commodity prices within the agriculture sector. And so they've been predicting a rise. Why? Because of COVID-19. Now they are predicting that prices are likely to be going down. Why? Because all, don't also forget that within the period of COVID-19, export was affected. So for many of the farmers who would have exported, especially the large holder farmers who would have been exporting their produce, were forced to now sell on the domestic market. Is that why so we don't have? Is that why we don't have a sugarcane farm to feed these are the commander factors sugar factory? That are leading, these are the factors that are leading to a drop in the price. Is that the Johnny, reason we I'm don't have a sugar farm? About it, the commander Adam, sugar Adam, factory. Adam, hold on. Johnny, I'm surprised you are still asking about commander sugar no, factory. No, I am when asking I'm, because you have not answered my question about the... Answers the man the says, Richard... That has for four hold on. Consistent yes. Hold on. Fail Richard says, Richard says, you didn't people. leave them with a sugarcane farm that will feed the factory that you said was completed. I'm asking why. Johnny, you see, when I hear this argument from my friends in the NPP, it is ridiculous. Ridiculous because, Johnny, when you are a farmer or you have interest in going into farming, and you even hear that there is a Commander Sugar Factory, and you are sure that there will be market for your sugar cane, people go into production. Now we have a situation where at the time that the factory was launched, mm -hmm. and go to Commander, you are certain for yourself. I watched the documentary even on your network. There are people, there are farmers who are ready to produce enough to feed the company. Is that not the case? And that clearly came out even in your own documentary. So why are we today trying to pretend as if government ought to have forced or the NDC government failed to engage people to go into sugar factory before we'll be able to get the sugar we need, the, 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 the sugar cane that we need to, to produce sugar? The irresponsibility of Akufuado and his government is the reason why the, the Commander Sugar Factory has not taken off. Okay, let's, let me give... irresponsibility. And we need no means worse about it. And clearly, Richard clearly doesn't understand the value chain of agriculture. And he's there talking about, about the warehouse and me being okay. a responsible Thank you. Farmer. Let, let, let Richard I'm step in. He doesn't understand. Let Richard step in and have the final word on this. So, Richard. The Ghana Buffer Store Company Johnny. remains the best solution. Johnny, thank you very much. Okay. Now, now Richard, uh, talk to me. Number one, mm. Johnny, number one, this country doesn't have up to a thousand. Uh, 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 industries, let's uh, uh, manufacturing uh, companies. So Adam's claim, I'm saying from independence mm. right through to uh, 2000, we had about 360. He's saying that within their time, they put up over a thousand. All the examples he cited to you were private 
uh, uh, privately set up companies. The uh, share butter tin mm -hmm. was a Brazilian company. The cement tin he's talking about in Bupe is a, Braz uh, a, a, a private company. They are all private. They, as a government, the one they have to show physically what their intervention is commander. Mm -hmm. And if he's talking about everything having been done, in actual fact, I remember Mutala sitting on your uh, on your on your uh, 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 station with a supposed Commander Sugar uh, as a, a final product. Everything had been done, so I'm saying that that is their track record in the agri sector. Well, when well hold on, hold on, don't, power, don't don't jump yet. Let's our, let's. Our fertilizer was being carted to neighboring countries. Okay. We use the cheat system to distribute fertilizer. All the fertilizer was being sold across Togo and Cote d'Ivoire. We have stopped all that. We now supply. Johnny. Yes, I can I hear you quickly. Me. Wrap up for me. Yes. Now, in this country, we have managed to stop all that. The fertilizer is here. And you see, there's a contradiction. Is what, what and the farmers pay for it, it, don't they? The farmers pay for it. Oh, yes, at a, at a very reduced uh, price, and it is available. Under the NDC, it is what we call Kalabule. That was Kalabule. So you couldn't even get the product in the first place. But come to his own argument about Isoko predicting prices. They mm. predicted the prices and what happened. The prices are rather dropping. Is he saying that at the time Isoko was talking about the effect of uh, COVID-19 on prices? Mm. Uh, the the local farmers were exporting and so it, uh, it, it 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 affected the prices then why is it now i'm saying that the systems the government has put in place mm. we have a storage system we have refrigeration uh, systems we have a whole plan right from the dug, uh, 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 the dumps to manufacturing and storage and export and okay. he was alluding to export you and I also agree that under this same government, there has been an increase in export of agriculture produce. And that is as a result of a good uh, 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 policy okay. and a system in place. Let me, let me ask you, did you, find, to, did you find his answers? Hold on. Export. Hold on. Did you find his answers on the Commander Sugar Factory satisfactory? Uh, and, and we'll wrap up on, on that one. He says that well, there were private people, your, there were uh, private people who it. were ready. There were private people who were ready to invest, to make sure that the factory was up and running, and you have failed to engage them, and we should blame you for that. What uh, do you say? Uh, Johnny, Johnny, I'm saying that the NDC fully operationalized Commander Sugar Factory. Okay? They brought the cameras there, they took all of you there, they brought a product to your office, uh, to your studios, displaying that these are products from Commander and that commander is in full force. So per his own comments, commander was supposed to be operational. We shouldn't come and MPP will need to do any intervention. They spent $36 million, I'll grant him that. If they spent $36 million to put up a factory and they put out the product of it on TV, only for us to realize in Sakawa there's actually no sugar. How do you blame the NPP for that? If you but, have but you need to maintain the farm to feed the factory. NPP doesn't need to come and intervene. But, but you, need, you need to, to sustain the farm. You need to sustain the farm to feed the factory, correct? Oh, so you, are you saying that the farmers who were on the farm or supposed to be on the farm producing? Because he told you that farmers across the place, because they know there's a commander sugar factory somewhere, will start... Uh, doing or uh, uh, planting sugar cane. Mm. So using his own logic, the farmers want money. They should be carrying their uh, 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 sugar cane to Commander and Commander should be producing. Okay. Will the MPP come and sack uh, or stop farmers from uh, 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 farming sugar cane? That is his own logic for you. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. My guests this morning have been the Honorable uh, Richard Johnny. Yama is a Deputy National Communications Johnny. Director of the NPP and also Adam Agbana is uh, Adam Agbana is a, a deputy national youth organizer of the NDC. Thank you very much for watching and let the comments continue.
We want the best for Ghana. And uh, this remarkable gentleman who's written a book, My Defining Moments, A Trip from the Village to Parliament and Beyond. The Honorable Ken Jarasa is a very outstanding former parliamentarian. He's been first and second deputy speakers of parliament um, and also is a legal practitioner. Uh, he's practiced journalism as well and he mentions a few journalists. I'm privileged to be one of the few mentioned in this book and extolled for the uh, good work that we're doing. Go out there, grab it and read it. And thank you very much, Honorable Jurassic, for that.